thank you all for coming, for being here, um, giving me the opportunity to share something that's really dear for me. And thank you, Team Monotype or Creative Mornings Berlin. It's a unique space here. And the Forum Factory, I've been here before. It's quite enjoyable, actually, to stand here. Better than I've expected. Um, just a little correction. I didn't change from happy to unhappy. Yeah, that wouldn't be really something I'd be looking for. My life is much more fulfilled now that I have my own company. But I would like to share with you a few things. Um, I claim to be able to teach you German in 30 days. And just out of curiosity, who here had the honor to have to learn German before? That's quite a few. But even the others here, we all had to learn some language in our lives before. And I'm not sure how you remember your language learning. Um, I have mixed emotions when it comes to this. I sat in over 20 language classes and it was pretty boring if it was a good experience. Yeah? So let me do a little thought experiment to bring you closer to the experience of a beginning language learner. I'm not sure whether... Ah, that's beautiful. Master of change. If you learn a language, you have to change. It's inevitable. And learning a language is actually self-exploration. Because with that little experiment now, you will realize how deeply learning a language can change you and in what spaces it can bring you. So imagine you one day wake up in the middle of a marketplace and everything around you is foreign. There's foreign people that look different. They speak to you and you don't understand them. And they don't understand you. So, when I speak a different language to you, you are just clueless and you're irritated. And this is exactly how you feel when you learn a new language. And this irritation is rather, makes you feel like that woman here, a bit desperate, looking out of the window, oh, I want to be out of here. And it's a pretty anxious state. Every language learner is anxious. It's a natural reaction to not being understood. Now, another question. How would you, what do you think? How much does it matter in such a marketplace, in such a situation, that you have a PhD, that you are very good at what you're doing, that you have a million on your bank account, or that you are the president of whatever state? It matters nothing, because you cannot communicate it. And communication means to share and to unite with others. So if you cannot communicate, who are you then? Your identity is gone. And you've worked on that identity hard for many, many years, if not decades, if you're a bit older like me. If you're 20, then it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, yeah it takes some time to build some identity, right? And it changes constantly anyhow, so. Um, so let me get back to language learning. If you want to learn a language, you have a few options. And one of the most common options is to go to language class. And that makes sense, you know, it's a fixed place, some rhythm, some structure, that is always helpful when you're uncertain. It's a good way to deal with anxiety. But, I think okay. <laughs> and um, also it makes sense, learning a language exposes you to an abundance of information and that is overwhelming. And we try to reduce this overwhelmingness by reducing the amount of information in the classroom for you. So you have a chance to learn that language. Now the problem is, when you go to a language class in Berlin, for example, you're fine, you're happy, you're excited, I learn a new language, it's thrilling, it's a good thing. Then you sit down, you're ready, the teacher starts and sie spricht Deutsch. Yeah? They use a language you do not understand to teach you a language that you do not understand. I don't know, I'm a very rational being, it doesn't make any sense, but nevertheless I'm guilty, I did this for 15 years. Yeah? And it works. And the question is why does it work? It doesn't work thanks to that setup or thanks to the German language being so beautiful and easy to learn. It works because we are learning machines. We have no choice but to learn, we are survivors. If we wouldn't be survivors, we wouldn't be sitting here, all of us, or families at least. Yeah? So, the setting is horrible, from my point of view, but it works and that's why it's still kept up. So you sit there, and what happens in that moment when you realize, oh, they're gonna speak German to me all the time, 
you're thrown back to that marketplace. You're in the middle of nowhere, your identity is gone, you're just a human being. Nothing bad to be human, yeah? but somehow we would like to be some person, some identity. And this is what happens in language teaching, at least in Berlin most of the time, maybe in your country as well, or in other countries. Now, they call this um, monolingual approach or total immersion. They say the more you're exposed to German, the better. That's true if you have some knowledge. If you have no knowledge, this is just painful. So what does an intelligent being do in such a situation when it's painful? We run away. Yeah? You do a month of here, a month there, and that school. You try another school, maybe it's better there. Maybe the teacher is better there. And later you come to the conclusion, maybe German is just not, just not for me. And you withdraw. You blow up your little bubble, your little expert bubble. And as soon as you blow this up, you notice, oh, there's so many bubbles here. And they attract each other, so you bubble together. You have a bubble party here, bubble tea there. So you live in your little bubble, and it's very comfortable. Yeah? And it's totally fine. You can live in that bubble for the rest of your life. But deep inside, you know, this bubble is always keeping something distant from you, and something that possibly you were seeking for before you blow up your bubble. You're always distant from the country you're in. When you come to Berlin, why would you blow up a bubble and not just be directly in the city and be in touch with this culture? It's a beautiful culture and there's beautiful people. It's also ugly people, but we can ignore them. <laughs> yeah? They're everywhere, so what to do? Now, the problem is you cannot just pop that bubble. Because if you do that, there's a vacuum. It's like stopping to smoke, you know? If you just quit smoking, Something happens. Maybe you eat more sweets. Same in German, you're more vulnerable again. And vulnerability needs a safe space to be experienced and to be lived through. So to successfully learn a language and also to teach a language, you need to create a safe space. And this safe space is created by trust. In a teaching situation, the student needs to be able to trust the teacher and the teacher needs to be able to trust the student. It's a two-way road. It's never just one way. If I don't trust my client that they can do their job, I'm not interested because I will not reach such speed and such quality in my doing. No problem to learn some German in some time. That's easy for everyone because you're learning machines. But if you want to learn German in 30 days, you need to trust the person guiding you and I need to trust you that you do your homework. Yeah? Otherwise, I'm out. You can pay me as much money as you like, it doesn't work. It simply doesn't. And trust is not something that you grant someone and it's there forever or used up. Trust is something constantly earned. I earn the trust of my clients with every session I have. And they earn my trust with every session we have. Yeah? Because if they don't, I have a serious talk with them maybe twice, but there's no third discussion. And this way you have a strong bond, and this strong bond helps you to experience and, and bring in your vulnerability in the language learning process. And you feel secure, despite looking ridiculous, because everyone looks ridiculous learning a language. There's no way around. Your identity is gone, yeah? I cannot change that. But I can connect to who you are by connecting to you, by building this bond of trust, and um, by using your language at times to hear about where you are right now and who you are. Because this is what we learn a language for after all, to communicate, to share and to connect with others, right? Now, one last point. Yeah, people always say the German language is difficult to learn. I do this job for 18 years now and it gets easier and easier. Not just because I'm German, but because I realize how simple it is in its core. It's a beautiful language. It's, it's joy. It's like making love to your tongue. Yeah? Now, the language is not the problem. And uh, some people say, yeah, I'm too old for this stuff. But the older you are, the more knowledge you have to connect the new language to. So you make up for not being that flexible anymore. If you're young, you're lucky. It's a good thing. Yeah? 
So it's not the problem. The problem is indeed this identity loss. The older you are, the more fixed, the more stable your identity is. And you don't like to give that up. If you're young, you just make language learning part of your identity. It's the easy way. It's a good way. But if you're old, whatever that is for you, right? You can be old with 18, trust me. Um, you don't like to give that up. And that makes language learning such a pain in the neck at times. So you need a good environment to learn a language, any language, and especially German. Now, if you think I've been just talking about language learning, let me just explain to you, this is also how I do my business. I have grown since I started this business. I've been a freelancer, pretty hungry most of the time. Then I updated or upgraded my status to being employed for seven years, which is rare in my field, still hungry. and. At one point in time, I couldn't stand sitting in this classroom anymore, standing in front of a classroom, which is a lovely job. You can drink coffee, have nice people around, but I couldn't do that anymore. I wanted success. I wanted to feel progress in my doing, results of my work. So I started my own company, and that company has been growing ever since. And beyond that, it is more and more satisfying with every client I have. And this is because I realized trust is something worth striving for. But you cannot just trust people or expect people to trust you. And you first have to work on trusting yourself. And this is the main work I've been doing in the last four years. I learned to trust myself. And the more I could trust myself, the more my business flourished, the clearer I became in my goals and my doing. This is actually everything I wanted to share with you. Thank you for your attention. Hope you take something from it and wish you a good day.